Um, you know, listen, no, I, I, I wish, I hope we, to see Will 14 more dramatic roles. As long as he's not playing Shaggy, I'm fine with it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody was we, we can't, what? Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm commenting nice on this other word. <laughs> I am, I'm being nice Scoob. to Will Forte. Been warming its way into it. Yeah. Scooby-Doo wasn't even talked about <laughs> in here, man. It's not going to be anything really quick, and I'm not going to even try to, like, hold off my opinion on this, but I'm watching this show right now, and a lot of you are ahead of us, or at least ahead of me on this, and I just started watching this last night, like, late last night, and I got hooked, man, yeah. watching this show, and I'm curious to see what you guys think about it. Now, I'm going to put my opinion out there. I know you sure. saw one episode, yeah. and then mm. you saw two. two, and I really want to talk to you about this because of something you told me and some okay. other people told me, but okay. I caught... Four episodes of an eight-episode series called Sweet Tooth. And I got to tell you, man, I'm sorry it took me a while because I've been watching some series on Netflix. And some of them, they've been hyped up. And I've been like, ah, I don't know, man. Yeah, I sometimes you, you watch something and you're like, yeah, I don't think this is bad, but it's just not doing it for me. Yeah. And then they say it's number one. And we end, end up talking about it. And it's not even that big of a deal. But, man, I got to say, I really enjoyed the hell out of Sweet Tooth, at least what I saw. We have reason to believe that you are hard. He's like, damn, that was badass. He's like, shit. <laughs> I was about to call you the N-word. <laughs> I ain't gonna do that now. But I, won't cry I am sick of that sad-ass girl, though. I know. <laughs> damn, girl, what, get on your meds or something. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't be so depressed and ruining all these songs for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I love That's that song. Like, what's, she, what's she doing? <laughs> making it sad, depressing. Yeah. The sad stuff happened in the show, in the trailer. Yeah, but why you gotta take my songs? Make up, make up a song for the for the show. Plus, the, the the drums are so triumphant. <laughs> yeah, I know. And she comes in bringing it down. Yeah. And then girl take <laughs> and yeah, oh, girl no. take anything. <laughs> Corey wants an uplifting song, you know, showcase yeah. when they're showcasing all the fucking genocide. <laughs> and the virus and everything else. Straight out of Compton. <laughs> Crazy <laughs> ice cube. Man, I enjoy I enjoy the writing in this so much, man. And probably it helps that I just didn't even know what this was about. I'd never heard of this. I'd never seen anything about this. Even when this was starting to become popular. And it was getting hyped on Netflix and people were about to watch it. And it was, you know, people were learning that this was based on a graphic novel. Even then, I didn't know. I thought that was an elf or something. <laughs> I, thought, I thought there was some medieval shit going on. I didn't know anything. I didn't, I didn't see the antlers right there. Fantasy. Yeah, I thought it was an elf that likes candy. <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't know what it was, man. Uh, so going in, not knowing anything is a big help because it really does help when you're going with no, with, with no bias at all. That's why I'm glad I never read the, the graphic novel right there. Because I definitely do go in biases on a lot of things, but I have to, and I get, I'm able to get rid of them. But um, you know, and, I, and that's especially when it comes to stuff that I've seen before with the apocalyptic genre, sure. mm -hmm. the post-apocalyptic genre. Mm -hmm. I just got through. Now you talk about bias. I I love that book, The Stand, mm -hmm. uh, and I had a bias going into everything that's that has been that has been adapted from that. We just saw yeah the new adaptation on, that was on Paramount Plus. Yeah, welcome. The Boulder Free Zone. Stu Redman. Which one of you is Larry Underwood? You know, that is something where I was able to remove my bias because I really love that book. But even, I, when I, you know, to be fair, I had to come as much as I want to love this series, man. I had to say, you know what? And this is relating to what I'm talking about. It's like, man, it's just, it's just so many post-apocalyptic tropes that are happening here. And I don't know, because this was written in the late 70s, so right, right. maybe like, this helped the, out with yeah, a lot of those. The, like the things you've seen before this borrowed from the original source material. Yeah. It's just like with John Carter. When that movie yeah. comes out, you're like, yeah, I've seen all this before. It's like, I know, because they all stole from the original book. <laughs> yeah. But now it's, it doesn't it's matter. It feels yeah, and, now. yeah. And what you could do with Sweet Tooth, you could actually look at it as... You can look at Sweet Tooth as uh, the stand with minus the supernatural and more science fiction. But, you know, with, with, with this, all those tropes that I was expecting or even saw here, either they were made to feel somewhat original or this was doing it so well that 
I ain't even noticed them, mm-hmm. you know. And they do. Then I'm, I'm guaranteed they do some of those things. Oh yeah. I mean, no, I think it indulges them, them in them. But I just think, at least so far, the story and the acting is so good that it didn't, never even crossed my mind. No, yeah. you know. And it's PG thirteen for sure, so kids can watch yeah. this. But you know, the cool thing about that is that finally, you know, parents can watch some post apocalyptic cool thing with their kids and not have it be the Hunger Games for the fifty. Sure. <laughs> you know, the, 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 it's no, it's no young adult a YA yes. feeling thing. Yeah, I was so happy about that, man, because that's the thing I thought. Also, I said we're dealing with, uh, you know, a young kid, you know, in this post-apocalyptic world. Oh my God. Okay, we're gonna be in that YA genre again. It's like, nah, man, not like the Hunger Games and all any of these other things. It really is. That's what I loved about this. It's kind of its own thing when you have the story of, and his close to home, of, and for people. That's why I say it's kind of like the stand because there's a virus that's going on. This virus is wiping people out. People are trying to fend for themselves, you know, because of the collapse of society. But where it kind of spins off is that it looks like there's a new species about to take over as you have these babies being born with animal features, and they're called hybrids. And, you know, in this world, and we can see it a lot here because, again, it really does hit close to home where we're trying to blame Asians for, you know, what we would call them the Chinese flu. Right. And this, they're trying to blame the hybrids mm-hmm. for bringing in the whatever disease is and everybody, everybody's very paranoid and I, I think at this point I've only seen four episodes I think they're hunting them down but I uh, you know I love that spin on that and I think having that element in there fantasy science fiction whatever has really made it stand on its own yeah it's it's got a kind of a, a unique look to it and you actually read all of the yeah, graphic yeah I've read novel. some of it before but then knowing the series was coming I was like you know what I never did finish this let me sit down and just read it all from the beginning to end um and what I can tell you is like having read the series, just even watching the first episode, I was like, yes, yeah, is very different. Really? Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because because uh, with the with with the series, um, it's very bleak. It's uh like it's, it's a bleak color palette. Mm. Uh, it it is not. I, I was like, how you would you make this PG thirteen? Because you got the military cutting open pregnant women. Oh, you, you you got Jeopards. Who you like? Yeah, I don't know about this guy. I mean, he's helping the kid, uh, but you know, they 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 get to a town where they get connected with these whores who are helping them. Yeah. Um, and even like the hybrids, I I knew from the very first production shot because the way they show the kid, like the, with this, they've prettied it up a lot to the point where this kid he looks like a cute little white boy <laughs> with antlers. You may, that, that makes you just want to adopt him even more. Yes. Whereas Sweet Tooth in the comic. He has more deer features yeah, where he that. looks weird. Yeah, he looks like Don Not Deer. <laughs> yes, he does. He does. And and he's yeah, he no, I don't care. He's, he had, I mean, it starts out the same way. He's been living in a cabin with his yeah. dad, but in the comic, his dad is so ultra religious, and that's all he teaches him all the time. Uh. So when he gets around people. All he knows is to quote the Bible, oh, wow. and he's very fragile. Very fragile. Interesting. <laughs> so, so it looks so like, watching yeah. it from the first episode, I'm like, all right, everything I know about this comic, I got to throw away. So it's a- and even getting into the second episode, I'm like, all right, none of this stuff is even in here. So it's it's almost two separate entities. So, so pretty much just going with the, the premise and the yes. characters, but only really in name to a yes. degree, especially yes. if you're a kid. Yeah. yeah. I right. mean, I, does that bother you that they changed it? Okay. I'll say this. Like you talk about the bias – it bothers me some, but I recognize like the, the longer I watch it and the more I start to accept it as its own thing, then the less it bothers me. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, cause I've learned to do that a long time ago. Yeah. Just, cause, cause I realize, like, like I always say this, this is a good thing. When you develop something for television, you don't want to do a straight adaptation. You, you want to make it to where, I mean, maybe you don't need to like go so far from the source material, but you're d- developing it for a different medium, and especially a comic book or a novel for television has to have its own development in certain areas. Yeah. Certain, certain characters you're going to focus on that they didn't before. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. going through this like right now reading Lovecraft Country and seeing where it diverges, but I go like, I see why they made the decisions. I was going to bring up that example too. Like yeah, say, yeah. Hey, you know. The places where they made the, the changes, I'm like, I get why you did that. Okay, yeah. this makes sense. And in here, I'm like, yeah, I, you, you're doing your own thing but you feel comfortable with it and I have two stories to enjoy this way yeah um, ever since 
I mean, I've seen so many adaptations. Forrest Gump being one of the biggest ones, where it's just kind of like, damn, you even made that better, much so, better. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, shit. If we, anybody who's watched the, the, you know, the Jungle Book, uh, you know, from Disney or 101 Dalmatians, you know, I mean, every things change. You accept them as they are. But I haven't read the graphic novel, so I can only go by this, and I'm enjoying what I, what I see here a lot, man. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm because one of the things I'm really impressed with. Are the actors they have here? Yeah. Uh, Will Will Forte is an underrated actor. He man. is. This guy, he was you know the, the people recognize him on Saturday Night Live. He's been often put in comedic roles, but I mean it's been like bits and pieces of dramatic acting that he's done. He's the father here, and he when he, when this opens up, I, I would say that this is a it's a very very strong performance from him, uh, where he has to be, you know, he, he's not the character that you're talking about. Right. In the novel. Yeah. No, he has to be somebody that has to be the father. He's got to be the mother too. Mm-hmm. He's got to be fair with this kid, but also do it in a way where this kid don't doesn't turn against him because that's the only person that he knows and he knows like it's shit the, the moment he starts rebelling, he's dead. <laughs> Yeah. I, I appreciate the fact that he wasn't this, this strict authoritarian, which is mm-hmm. what so often these characters would become in like apocalyptic situation. I mean, he's he's loving but very fair, mm-hmm. which I like a or firm, I should say, yeah. he's loving but very firm. Um, you know, listen, no, I, I I wish I hope we, to see Will Forte in more dramatic roles. As long as he's not playing Shaggy, I'm fine with it. Oh no, oh, no, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I know about it. Was we, we can't, what? We can't, I'm just saying. I'm just I'm commenting nice on this other words. I am I being school, nice to Will Forte. Be worming its way into it. <laughs> I'm being nice to Will Forte. As long as he's not shaggy, keeps doing more yeah, stuff like this, yeah. you're good in my book, Will. Thank you for what you did. Scooby-Doo wasn't even talked about <laughs> up in here, man. Wasn't no hybrid dogs. Or anything. And we might see one, though. That we saw one. God, we saw one little hybrid damn. abomination, baby. <laughs> leave it alone, man. <laughs> I'll never leave it alone. I'll never forget. Boy, you, you hold a grudge for days, man. On this tune song, going to be shaggy. I'm just... I'm just <laughs> You know what? We got to make sure it's on. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna get that on. There. <laughs> but only if it's Will Forte. <laughs> Will Forte, man, we ain't even talking about Shaggy right now. Look at I'm saying he did a good job in this series so far. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, by why don't you what get a did. Sky writer? <laughs> Maybe I will. Sky, Will Forte was a sh- terrible Shaggy. <laughs> also, Joe Rogan is only yeah, five yeah. foot three. <laughs> 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 but to your points, yes, he's good. <laughs> I love this guy too because I think the one I'm really impressed with is this actor here, Nonzo Anozi. Now, yeah. if you don't know Nonzo Anozi, you've, you've seen him before. Yeah, he's been a lot of stuff. Yeah, because this man right here, you've seen him because this man is he's pretty much he pretty he's pretty much making a career out of bodyguard and weird little white boys. <laughs> your father is in a complicated profession. Yeah, just put antlers on Artemis file, put him in a better movie. You kind of have what's going on here. Yeah, that was him. And he was the big black dude in Artemis file and Ender's Game. Oh, that's right. He was in Ender's Game. Yeah, yeah I think that's the first thing I saw him in. Yeah, and then Game of Thrones. And he's so good here, though, man. He's so good. He plays a uh, well. You know what? I'm not going to tell you because it's a great reveal. Now they probably you, you might have seen it somewhere else. They read about tease it. it in the first episode. They tease yeah. it, but yeah. I don't want to say anything because I want people to see the tease. Okay. Because the okay. tease happens very cool. Because I knew what he was when before I saw. It, but if you didn't, it'd be like, oh wow, that's kind of cool, you know, uh, uh, what's happening with this character. Mm-hmm. You already see him here, so when you see it, it's gonna be like, oh, that's kind of awesome what they did right there. Uh, but what I like about these characters mostly is how all of them are kind of having their own overarching storylines. Like they, every, you know, a lot of these people stand, they stand, uh, uh, they stand on their own. They have their own subplots happening, and. You can you can see very early how these subplots are going to merge, mm. and you know uh, this is cool. But I'm just warning you right now, as somebody who hasn't finished with this, I dread seeing this is going because it's going to be dark as shit where this goes to. And the writing is so good that I'm ready to like handle it, but it's going to be rough. I think embrace because, the darkness. Oh man, I had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how dark it would get because you know I, you you just read the comic because I mean maybe there's a cutting open pregnant ladies and things like that that's pretty goddamn dark yeah or just outright murdering people and like oh lots so, lot so much murder sure and like we we see we see that to it we I mean we see people die in this show but it's very much that PG thirteen violence as you described yeah so I mean in terms of like goriness and things like that like probably not that dark but more maybe like emotional well, I could no pop, it's definitely emotional that. because what's what what's going on here is that you can tell that there are some good people. I yeah. forgot this actor's name. The what, I think he the doctor. The doctor. I forget his name too. Yeah. Uh, but he's yeah he's been a lot of things. He was just in uh, 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 Leona Holmes. 
uh, and a couple other things I saw him in. But, man, it, they got good people who are faced with some really hard morality choices. Yeah. And I wonder how that's going to play <laughs> later on. In, in, uh, <laughs> Enola Holmes. I'm sorry. You, you, you mix the letters around. Yeah, that's why I'm dyslexia. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to blame it on dyslexia. And that's why I don't play Scrabble. <laughs> I'm afraid of what choices are going to have to be made. I'm afraid of what people are going to have to face themselves to do, what hardships people are going to have to uh, going to have to become to, to survive in this world or for other people that they care about. It's a, no, it's a, and really, for even, for even being PG-13, they, they do some really things in here, man. By the time I got to the third episode, they have all these different facets. Another cool thing about this series is that they have, they have all these different facets of society. And some have just embraced just being, you know, just rough people. It's barbaric. almost like the bar, barbaric, wild west. Mm. Some people have civilized to where it's, it's like the west. It's not exactly wild. Uh, and some people still have the suburbs that look very modern. Yeah. And the suburbs are kind of. <laughs> mm. Then, uh, then the then the Wild West part, because at least you know what people are. The suburbs are still trying to keep this veil of civility and having fun and parties and whatnot. And they are some cold ass people, man. And that's some of the things that really makes me queasy going into it too, man. It looks great, you know. This is something yeah. where, you know what I don't like about this. This is that kind of apocalyptic movie that looks so good and makes you feel like you might have a chance. Yes, because <laughs> I know. Listen, I've already. I've, I've already accepted that if something, if the apocalypse happens, a zombie or whatever, I'm gonna be one of the first to go. You have to put a bullet in my head, probably. I know I'm gonna be like, <laughs> torn up, or human beings gonna eat me or something. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna win any uh, any apocalyptic lottery. You know. Mm, yeah. But here, this is this looks so good in some parts, man. You know, not these military parts, real, but you know, all, this, it, this is where you have like these beautiful landscapes, a lot of green, a lot of mountains. A lot of vistas and whatnot, and it's just uh, it's just it, and, and a lot of just hopeful moments in there too. You know, like when this moment here, when the this woman who is alone, you'll see her character in the series where she's out in the middle of the city and she just kind of sees these elephants and she's like, you know what? Yes, this is terrible, but I found myself. <laughs> elephants, I like elephants. Yeah. That's what I learned. It's so good. Like, <laughs> no shit. I would not be like. This is amazing. Like, oh shit. Yeah, at least I was like, we saw one of them like just go by a car like. It takes one and you're dead. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, yeah, no, it's uh, I like it, man. I, I I really do enjoy this, and I'm looking forward to where this is going. If I had any problem with anybody in here, it would probably be uh, Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth can't keep his little ass out of trouble. <laughs> He's yeah. precocious. Yeah, I mean, I get it. He, you know, he he doesn't know the world. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, but I, there, there, there are times though when those antlers they look like they are pretty much taped on his head. <laughs> 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 you can see the little stumps where it's like yeah, he, it, it was glued on. Mm-hmm. Or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a headband with it. <laughs> I mean, that's obviously, what it is, it's probably a headband with a wig. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, what it probably is. so. Yeah. But I mean, that doesn't bother me. I will say, like, how they use their budget because it's such a. I mean, yeah, yes, there's animal hybrids, and it's in a, in a pandemic like uh, post apocalyptic scenario. They use their budget very well. Mm. They, when they have CGS, like, oh, this is acceptable for, okay. for for this series. Never really bothered me to a degree. So yeah, I, I I like every at least in these first two episodes, all the action scenarios that they've had or like the the certain moments, it all felt very real and grounded. And I appreciate it for that. Yeah. Yes, same here, man. I, I really, Martin. I, I mean, after seeing one episode, are you interested in watching more? I am. Uh, the first episode didn't grab me as much as I hoped, but then I start watching the second one, mm-hmm. and 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 like I said, I'm shedding my my bias yeah. and just being more like, all right, well, I do want to see where this goes. Uh, it's it is an interesting thing. Like I, you know, you saw uh, saw the picture of Gus on the cover number one. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'm telling you how mm-hmm. in the comic he has more animal features. He is actually the most human looking of all the hybrids oh, in the comic. Yeah. Like yeah. some of them look like like a straight beaver's head. Yeah. So I'm like, how are you gonna do this? Or I I, I guess I'm kind of curious to see because I don't expect it if to they go off. that far. Yeah, I know they won't, but I'm just curious to see how far they will go with these. We need I, an ugly kid. We need an ugly one. Yeah. No, there was uh, my brother and I. Man, when I was a little kid, we went to go see the Elephant Man. And the Elephant Man is called the Elephant Man because of his condition, his right. physical yes. condition. Elephantitis. And my brother and I, and, he, and again, I don't even know if he knew it was a true story, my brother had me laugh because we walked out. And I thought, man, I remember thinking, even as a kid, I was like eight or something. I thought, wow, that was kind of beautiful. And walked out and I was like, Mark, what'd you think about that? And he's like, shit, man, I don't know. Elephant Man, where's the trunk? <laughs> Where was his ears? Yeah, I, just, I wasn't no goddamn elephant man. 
<laughs> He's very literal, he, he your brother. He said there was lipstick out the whole movie. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he was, Some Elvin. Ain't this, this a bitch? Mm. He, he was mad. He's like, that's the first thing he said. He said, shit, where was the trunk? Oh, I said, no elephant man. Where no elephant in there? <laughs> I saw a man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I will say that that kid, there's different versions of... Oh, this is the actor here. I really, I really do like this actor. Adele Actor, he is so good in this, man. Um, and yeah, there's a, you know, I, um, and the kid who plays Sweet Tooth, there are different versions of, of, of Sweet Tooth in the movie uh, where he goes from being, goes from being like a, uh, you know, like a little toddler to being 10, I guess. But, uh, his name is Christian Convery, and he's really good. I liked him a lot. I like the character. I get the character. I was just like, damn, boy, can't for once, can you just sit your ass down when people tell you? Oh, dear sir, in movies and televisions, young boys never listen yeah. to what they're told. They're little scamps. Yeah, they're, they're, they're <laughs> scamps. They're angry all the time. They never behave. Yeah, yeah. Also, it's made a little creepy because of, you know, because he's half deer. And there's like one shot in this show. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's like, you know, don't be going out in the background like that at night. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to spoil everybody. It's like, you'll see it. You'll be I like, know. Oh, I it's was a like, nightmare. Ooh, no, no. It's like, is this a horror film all of a sudden? <laughs> it's like, wanted, all right, let's, let's kill these abominations. <laughs> even, when, even when the characters, see, like they're, they're, they got used to them, they were like, all right, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, get your yeah. creepy ass over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? And I'll tell you before we go, there's plenty of action here, too, man. There's a lot of stuff yeah. that keeps it going. There's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of action. Uh, there's so many different storylines, and, the, and these storylines are w- written so well in a way I can't wait to see how they converge. Robert Downey Jr. produces. I didn't know yeah, his wife. Yeah, I mean, his wife. Mm. Yeah, man. I, I, the, the, for, the apology for Doolittle. Yes. <laughs> He's supposed to do yes. animals, but. Mm. Yeah, don't worry about Doolittle. Do better. <laughs> 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 nah, man. Four episodes in, I can't wait to see the remaining four episodes. I'm Same. really excited about it. Uh, I mean, I you know. Again, it's not fair to give it a, a review or a, a rating based on a half review, but I'll, maybe I'll do a second part to let you know if my, my feelings have changed. But for right now, it's heading towards a full price. Mm-hmm. I'm really enjoying the storytelling in this. This is the kind of storytelling that makes you feel like, man, I'm watching a good book, even though Martin says it's very different. I mean, even, even though it's a graphic novel, I'm looking at it like, man, I feel like I'm, this is adapted from a novel. Sure. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, it's headed for, towards a full price unless things change in the last four episodes. Chris, what do you think? No, I'm right there with you. You know, I, I, they're using their budget very well. It does, doesn't look cheap. Um, all the actors, I think, are doing a great job. And just in all these stories, even though I don't know what, how they're all going to coalesce at the very end. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I like what they're building up. Like, no one's given a bad performance so far. And I, I love the dynamic between the, 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 the two leads, the, the kid and the, uh, the well, I don't even want to say what, what, what he is. But, you know, the, what, what's that actor's Ch- name again? Oh, oh, the actor. Uh, uh, the, oh. No, Nancy Anozo. Oh, yes. you talk, who's that? Oh, the oh the big guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nazi, I, I, I Nazi and nosy. Nonso and nosy. Nazi and nosy. I, I love their dynamic. So yeah, no, I'm. Let's see more of it, Martin. What, you know, I know you saw one episode, but what do you think? Uh, it's it's got great production. Uh, I I think I'm more. The, the thing I resist more is how it's such a clean apocalypse, <laughs> and it's part of me. It's like, huh? Okay, well. I guess I got to get used to that. But as I got into the second episode, I was sorry I wasn't able to watch more before I had to leave the house to, to do stuff and come over here. But it was enough for me to go like, all right, I'm, I'm interested. I'm, I'm liking this. And plus, based on what you guys are saying, has me even more hyped to, yeah. to watch it. Oh, shit. By the time you get to the fourth episode, they do some dirty shit, man. It's like it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. No, they introduce okay. more characters that come in. And I, you know what? And we say apocalyptic, but... It's not, you know, I can see why you say it's clean because it's not really, really apocalyptic. And as you, you get into the fourth episode, mm-hmm. you see like society is not gone. Yeah. They, they, and and the, that virus is going in waves. Mm-hmm. So that's why I say some places feel like a Western town. Sure, so sure. The, the suburbs and other places are still held up. Yeah. You know, so it's not like a pure apocalyptic. It's just a term we use because it feels so close to that category. Well, I wonder about everybody who did things about um, uh, pandemics. Like having this stuff drop now, <laughs> is it being embraced? Because everybody's like, "Oh, I lived through this," or is are people like, "Man, I, I don't want to see this shit." Man, people cashing in on that. She remember? The, the, I'm not saying it's always good, but remember, uh, uh, Michael Bay produced Songbird. that. No, I know, but that's why Songbird. we were. That, yeah. That's why we were in the middle of it. Yeah. But now that we're out of it, are people like, 
I'm exhausted. I don't want to see this. Or they like, oh yes, give me more. Well, this being on number one on Netflix yeah. for a long, like over a week mm -hmm. is saying that people want more. But as long as there's something more to it, though. sure, yeah. sure. I mean, it's still more fantastical. I thought it was, you know, I was like, they're wearing their masks. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, yeah, yeah. I wear my mask too. Yeah. <laughs> they should do.